My name is John Passfield, and I'm going to read from my Terry Fox novel in a moment. I'm calling this Video 5, Pheidippides and the First Marathon. Here's the cover of the novel, Terry Fox, Somewhere the Hurting Must Stop, a novel by John Passfield. I'll just read the uh, passage on the back, which is a summary of the novel. A one-legged boy, Terry Fox, sets himself the task of running a marathon a day across the length of Canada, the second largest country in the world, in aid of cancer research, because the children are crying with pain in the cancer wards, and somewhere the hurting must stop. Uh, now, in this novel, as in life, Terry Fox runs a marathon a day for 143 days. A marathon is 26 miles, or 42.195 kilometers. It's one of the most demanding events in the Olympic competitions. The origin of the concept of the marathon is based on the story of Pheidippides. I did not find in my sources that the historical Terry Fox knew about or thought about the original marathon runner, but it made sense to me as I was planning this novel that I make the story of the original marathon what I call an image arc in the mind of the fictional main character as he runs a marathon a day across the beautiful but demanding landscape of Canada. The novel tells us that the main character, Terry Fox, is thinking about the runner of the original marathon, but it does not tell us what conclusions he is reaching about that topic. Now, Imagery works in a poetic novel by parallel and contrast, so it's up to the reader to decide why the main character, Terry Fox, considers the story of the original marathon runner, Pheidippides, who ran the marathon just once to be significant imagery which helps to illuminate his own story of a marathon a day for 143 days. There are 15 chapters in the novel, there are about 50 images in each chapter. One image segment in each chapter tells the story of Pheidippides. So the main character is thinking of the original marathon runner and at a certain level of his mind every day as he runs across Canada. So I'll read the Pheidippides story as it is presented in the novel. Let me just find my page here. Whoops. Oh. So here we are in chapter one, page five. Terry Fox is running, and maybe I'll just read the first action segment. Dipping my leg in the Atlantic Ocean, seagulls circling overhead, muddy water, choppy currents, windy weather, April in St. John's, Newfoundland. So he sets out to run across Canada, and he runs through the 15 chapters of the novel. And in each chapter, as I said, he thinks of the story of Pheidippides. Pheidippides was running from Athens to Sparta this time. A leather pouch with a water bottle, sandal leather pounding the bath, bandana around his head to combat the sun. He was what was called a runner, a soldier whose role it was to run messages to all the far-flung corners of ancient Greece. So that's uh, a thought of Pheidippides in a chapter of about 50 images, and it's just one image. But it's a comparison and contrast uh, phenomenon in the mind of Terry Fox. Page 15. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. It was hot, and Pheidippides was exhausted. His water bottle gave out too soon. A high-speed run across the landscape of ancient Greece was a brutal undertaking. The sun beat down. The creeks were dry. He barked his shins on the sharpest rocks. He couldn't allow himself to take the needed rest. He was the messenger, and the message had to get through. Then we go to page 25. Pheidippides wiped his brow without slowing his pace, dripping sweat and feeling faint. All he could think of was the message. The Persians were threatening Greece. The Athenians were facing the brunt of the massive attack. The commander was blunt and anxious. Take a message to the Spartans. We are few. The Persians loom. Greece is at stake. 
There's little time to lose. Tell him we'll hold the Persians off for as long as we can. Then we go to page 35. Rocky crags within sight of the sea, deep valleys with brambles and thorns, a brutal sun beating down on Pheidippides' head, not a drop of water to drink, grit in his teeth, gleam in his eye. Pheidippides pounded along the trail for mile after mile. And now on to page 45 in another chapter. Now it just happened, I I write the form, and I put the Pheidippides images about halfway through each chapter. It just turns out that each chapter is about 10 pages, so every time I look for a page, it's easy, because every page on which there's in the Pheidippides images ends in five. So page 45. Pheidippides reached the top of a hill, dry as dust, the sun beating down, covered in sweat, pausing for breath. Just a moment to look ahead to see where he was. Sparta, he could see it in the distance. Won't take long to deliver the message. Athens and Sparta, both of them Greek. He breathed a sigh of relief. The return won't seem as daunting. The message will be that help is on the way. Well, let's go to 55 and see how that turned out. Pheidippides was running. The sun was blazing down. But for Pheidippides, it was what he thought of as a nightmare run. He was running back to his general. He'd been to Sparta and given the message, but he had nothing to show to his fellows for all his pain. A leisurely conference? Well, the gods would be angry. Why should Sparta send lambs to the slaughter for Athens' gain? The aches in the joints, the sickening message, the torturing sun. Still, he kept to a brutal pace, one foot up and one foot down. The Persians were massing for the attack. There were very few Athenians. At least he'd be one more soldier to make the stand. So the Spartans uh, rejected the idea of coming to help. And he's going back alone to bring the message that there won't be any help. Page 65 in a new chapter. The cave of the green god Pan. It appeared out of nowhere in front of Pheidippides and blocked his path. And now he stood and stared at the green god himself. A man if you looked at his torso. A goat if you looked at his thighs. The only gleam of his godhood was in his eyes. Welcome to my preserve. I didn't mean to startle you. A slight delay in your run back to Marathon. It will allow you to catch your breath. I have watched you fighting the terrain, your thirst, the heat. Your despair is perhaps the greatest impediment you face. You stumble on the fragments of the failure of your hopes. When your mission resumes, you will run on a smoother path. And now page 75 in the next installment. The green god Pan spoke to Pheidippides. Pheidippides panted and listened in awe. Dead dreams can be very painful. They haunt, they taunt, they mock. I have good news. I have double good news. Draw near and I will tell you what will come to pass. First for Athens, the city which you serve. Your people have been neglecting me. The surge of the Persians has been the result. But this reversal I am willing to grant as a boon. If Athens will promise to celebrate forever on into the future the green god Pan with sacrifices and torchlit races, the Persians will be thrown back into the sea. And as for you, Pheidippides, I have taken note of you you are a person who toils for no reward. Give all that you have to this race that you must run. To you I will grant release from the runner's toil. And now we go on to page 85 in a new installment, in a new chapter. Marathon, 
on a pivotal day, a nightmare in brutal sunlight, the Persians fighting fiercely and bravely, Pheidippides in the thick of the battle, bringing water and leather buckets, swinging a hatchet, throwing a spear, tending a comrade, binding a wound, thinking a prayer. The day wears on and the blood flows freely, fighting for empire, fighting for home which was to be the deeper motive for sticking to task. Piles of dead bodies, the flower of manhood, other treasures in other lands, a full flank withdrawal, a snarly conference, sailing for home. Drinks for the wounded, counting the dead, watching the Persian fleet sail away from the top of a hill. Then we go to 95. And the next installment. Relief on the plains of Marathon. The Persians defeated, turning their backs, sailing away. The Athenians, exhausted, treating their wounded, counting their dead. Miltiades then spoke. He of the helmet, he of the sword. We need someone to run to Athens to tell the city of our great victory to tell them their lives have all been spared, to have them prepare the sacrifices and the torchlit races in honor of the green god Pan. Are you up to the task, Pheidippides? Perhaps another should take your place. You as much as any have earned a reprieve. Pheidippides held his hand to his side. I am ready to run, my general. I am a man who seeks no reward. Let me be the one to announce that Athens is saved. The run to Athens was brutal. Pheidippides coughed up blood. A shorter run than to Sparta, but much more taxing by far. At times he wondered if he would make it. Blood was seeping through his tunic, the wound that he had hid from his general as he answered the call. He would never have let me run. No other should carry this news. It is I who have made a commitment. I who spoke with the green god Pan. He has given us the victory. He has been true in his word to Athens. He will be true in his word to me. He made a promise that I am counting on. I made a promise too, to give all that I have to this race that I must run. Now we move on to page 125. Pheidippides was running. He fought for the future. He fought through his pain. I have served my city faithfully, run the messages, carried the word, heat and cold and misery, hunger and thirst and an aching knee. But now I shall live at home, at one with my parents, at one with my clan. Huts in a circle, sharing the fire. I shall marry a certain maiden. I shall have children and sit in the shade, grow crops and reap the harvest. No more traveling far and wide in a runner's trade. The green god Pan has promised. As for you, Pheidippides, I have taken note of you. You are a person who toils for no reward. Give all that you have to this race that you must run. To you I will grant release from the runner's toil. And now on to page 135. For the next installment. What will it be? What will it be? The woman churned the butter, drew the water, tended the fire. The Persians were threatening Athens. Total defeat or total victory? The victors would slit the throats of the wounded in the battlefield. They would advance on the city and force the gates. Rape for the women, death for the older men and the boys. The burning of the city, babies smashed against the walls, old women tormented and tortured for the pleasure of drunken louts, idols smashed and the gods insulted. Did the Spartans arrive with vast numbers? Did the marathon soldiers prevail? Tending the dinner, rocking the cradle, wondering and wondering what has transpired. If only a messenger would arrive and bring the word. Well, we go now to page 145, and uh, 
this is in the last chapter of the novel, so it's the last chapter of Terry Fox's run, and this is imagery in his mind that at some level, deep, deep down in his mind, subconsciously, he's comparing and contrasting to his own run. And here's how the Philippides story ends. A runner, ho, a runner, open the gates, let him inside. The runner staggers in, dusty and dirty, blood on his side. Get him some water, give him some room. It is Philippides, the runner. Catch your breath, a sip of water, try to tell us what you know. Is there any word from Marathon? Did the Spartans rush to our side? Did we engage with the Persians? What has transpired? But if these lies in the dust, tears of frustration in his eyes, the water wets his lips, he opens his mouth, he speaks the word. Rejoice, everyone. We conquer. Athens is saved. Stand back. Give him room. He needs some air. Refill the bottle. Give him drink. Tend the wound in his side. Hustle and bustle, an old man crying, relief and shouts of joy. Pheidippides closes his eyes, his head is, head is eased down to the dust. No need for water, no need for balm, no need to tend him now. This man has died. And that's the end of the Pheidippides story. Now, where did Terry Fox uh, hear this story? It's not mentioned in the novel. Maybe he took it in history class in high school. Might have taken it in university in one of his courses. Might have uh, read a book that he found in the library. Might have seen it on uh, TV. doesn't matter. It's in his mind as an image, as an image arc. Eh? An arc is simply a, a cycle that uh, has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And there it is. Uh, here's a note. I uh, I make notes as I write uh, novels. I make notes as I polish the novels. You can access those notes for free, and I'll tell you how in a minute. I find the imagery of Pheidippides fascinating as it appears in the mind of the main character, Terry Fox. It was natural to include it, of course, as the fact that the historical Terry Fox decided to run a marathon a day makes Pheidippides an obvious historical person to reference in any account of the run for cancer. What fascinated me when I was planning my image cycles for this novel was the parallels and the contrasts, the ancient and the modern, the landscapes of Greece and Canada, the purposes of the two runs, the length of the runs, the values of the runs to the two societies, the successes and the failures of the two runs, and the ending of the runs, for the two runners. I knew in general the Pheidippides story, but was surprised and delighted to discover the intervention of the great god Pan when I read the sources. I realized that it added an interesting wrinkle to the original story, which would interact interestingly with the imagery of the main run, when the imagery of the novel was all in place. I wrote this image cycle early and folded it into the rough draft, was aware of it as I prepared the other Terry Fox image cycles. I decided, as I often do with image arcs, to simply interlayer it into the novel without an introduction and never doubted the rightness of that decision. So the character, the main character, Terry Fox, thinks of the imagery of that run but doesn't comment on it. He doesn't think in prose and make statements about it. Uh, but it's there. It's uh, working as imagery at uh, the deepest levels of his mind as he's running across Canada. Well, the title of the novel, as I said at the beginning, is Terry Fox, Somewhere the Hurting Must Stop, a novel by John Passfield. It's available on Amazon. It's also available at rocksmillspress.com, my publisher's website, R-O-C-K-S-M-A-L-L-S dot C-O-M. More information there. More information at my website in the form of two free books, a notebook and a journal. J-O-H-N-P-A-S-S-F-I-E-L-D dot C-A. Just go to that website, johnpassville.ca. Click on notebooks or click on journals. Go down to the Terry Fox icon, and there's two books for free. No money required. Have a look if you're interested. All my thoughts as I was writing and then polishing this novel. Lastly, I'll just say thank you for watching this video.